I invented Terraria Chess, Calamity Edition. This video was, again, inspired by Little Z's I Made Pokemon Chess. Unlike regular chess, each boss has an ability you can take into a game, such as Crabuon being able to move pawns sideways, or Supreme Calamitous making all of your pieces invincible for several turns. If you haven't seen the first one, I suggest you do after this, as this is now the second part, whereas the third will be a huge update using your guys' ideas, and the last one being a tournament with a $50 grand prize. This tournament will be hosted in the Ruthless Paper Discord server, so join us if you want to participate. For first time viewers, you may question how customary moves are possible online. You see in online chess, the only way to play is by the rules unless playing in person. However, chess.com has a mode where you can play around and make any move you like. Even then, there are some handcrafted rules I suggest. Now that I'm unveiling Calamity Chess, the rules are slightly different. Rule number one, choose between Calamity, Vanilla, or both. Rule number two, choose who will control the board and share it on Discord. If you can't decide, flip a coin or elect a third party. Rule number three, keep track of your abilities. It is your responsibility to have a mental timer of when your ability will activate, else the timer resets. Rule number four, if an ability is every X turns, it is locked and loaded. You can use it any turn after it is loaded, and the countdown begins when you do. Rule number 5. Kings can now one-shot pieces with extra health and bypass abilities such as dodges, but not invincibility. Rule number 6. Have fun. Still can't think of anything better. Now into the thick of it, what are all the abilities? Well, first one is Desert Scourge. Pawns can now charge like the Scourge and jump 3 initial spaces instead of only 2 on the first turn. Additionally, you can move 1 space diagonally backwards or backwards also at any time. Crabulon. Like crabs, pawns can now move from side to side. If it is their first move or the pawn is in your second row, it can move 2 pieces sideways else they can only move 1 space unless at 50% or less pieces. Pawns can also capture sideways. Hive Mind. Appoint 1 pawn to be the Hive Mind. When killed, announce Hive Mind. The piece that killed you is infected, killing any singular piece in its movement pattern every turn. You choose this piece. Infestation lasts until death or three pieces are taken. Perforator Hive. Appoint one pawn to be a Perforator Hive. When that pawn is attacked, announce Perforator. All pawns you've lost are freed of the Hive and returned to their starting positions. If an opponent's piece is there, take it. Pawns must be replaced in open spaces from left to right. Slime God. Every 6 turns, you may select 4 pieces and they will create a pact and be immediately teleported into the center 4 tiles of the board. Any pieces in the center 4 tiles are taken. Cryogen On a non-budging timer, every 7th turn is when every opponent piece will become frozen, and you can move 3 pieces before it is their turn again. White tiles remain frozen for an additional turn. You cannot check or kill the king during these turns. Aquatic Scourge Rooks now bring a tidal wave with them when they move. When they move, they have an aura of a tsunami one tile left and right wherever they move. This wave splashes every other rook move and takes one piece on each side of the path if applicable. Brimstone Elemental Every piece you have on a dark tile will be set on a brimstone fire. They cannot be captured, and any piece that tries to will immediately be taken. However, that pawn will no longer be on fire. Activates when below 8 pieces and lasts 5 turns. Calamitous Clone the brothers have been reborn. Upon reaching 75 and 50% of pieces, or 12 and 8, you must move a rook, bishop, and knight. Upon reaching 5 pieces, you continuously charge and can move 2 pieces a turn. Leviathan and Anahita. When you have all pawns, a point of pawns act as Anahita. It'll have an aura of 1 tile that will force any move made by opponent pawns to be reversed at all times if landed on, especially if almost captured. When you're left with 5 pawns, Anahita retreats and every pawn has a hitbox and hurtbox of 1 tile. When left with 2 pawns, both are active. Not at once, you specify which is which. Astro Morris Every pawn will get infected by the astral infection and explode when moving 4 spaces. This explosion is only 4 directions, up, down, left, and right, and 4 tiles. Whereas up to 4 of your regular pieces can explode in 1 tile or at any time you'd like. No, your king can't explode. Neither can your queen, nor can you capture a king with an explosion. Plague Bringer Goliath This mechanical plague bringer knows not the difference between allies and enemies. 
every enemy pawn can be ingrained with the plague after 5 turns, but yours will automatically all be ingrained at 10. Plagued pawns will plague another piece if within one tile. After a turn of being plagued, it will die. Only pawns can plague. Ravager Your entire side enacts the body of the Ravager. The knights are its head, the rooks its arms, and the bishop its toes. The knight can take pieces in the second tile away in all four directions as well as all the tiles directly surrounding it. The rooks and bishops can pierce up to three targets, but opponents can critically hit you. When you lose one rook, bishop, or knight, you will lose both. However, all these pieces must be dead before your king can be checkmated. Astrum Deus. When 50% are below in pieces, your pieces will be split in two. You will gain any pieces of your opponent you've taken to your board. They will be placed on your side's starting positions. If unable to, they will move to the next open space above their starting positions. So that's Calamity Chess. But I must be forgetting something. Would it even be Calamity if there wasn't content surpassing Moonward? These abilities are unmatched in power, but also some of the finest. Profane the Guardians. Three of your pawns will begin and remain in the center. They can boomerang in any eight directions and take a piece while returning to the center. You can return to any tile in the center. This counts as a turn. Once two Guardians are taken, the last one will be replaced with the Queen and be freed. Dragon Volley. Choose either the left or the right edge of the board to be inflamed with red lightning. Any enemy piece in this red lightning is immediately taken. This is active the whole game, and your pieces can move through it fine. Providence. Taking place as the queen, Providence passively sweeps across the board on your fourth row two tiles per turn. This is passive and occurs before you make your actual turn. Providence has four attacks, each sacrificing a pawn. Melee will take any piece two tiles around her, Ranged will fire a javelin in the movement of a knight, Summoner will summon a guardian, and Mage will shoot an unholy laser as a bishop. These moves must be cycled each time Providence is used. To kill her, it will land 4 hits in her 1 tile at Aura. The enemy's piece will return to its position, but it will count as our turn. Storm Weaver Silence before the storm is what this is. Throughout the whole game, you can zap a pawn with lightning from the king using the queen's movement once a turn. At 50% or below, tornadoes spawn in the two center rows, every other column. The first one does not have one. Enemy pieces cannot touch them, else they are stunned for a turn, once per piece. And your pieces have an additional health when in these tornadoes and will have the movement of a knight while in them as well. Ceaseless Void. Sacrifice one knight and place in the center of the board. On a non-budging timer once every seventh turn, the entire opponent's board will come one space closer to Ceaseless Void. In order to kill Ceaseless Void, you must kill all of its dark plasmas, aka pawns. Cygnus. The assassin's mobility is nearly unmatched with so little repercussions. You can castle any two pieces at any times, before and or after a turn. If enemy pieces are on the tile your castled pieces are supposed to land, capture them. You can also castle in all eight directions with infinite range, and you can castle to any two tiles within the gap. It does not have to be centered as long as the two pieces are together at the end. You cannot castle if your pieces are in the way. Once per match, you can assassinate an additional piece within your castling line of sight. Poltergast. All of your pawns help this ghastly manifestation maneuver. The king can teleport to any of these hooks and acts as a queen after or before teleporting. The king can teleport in its starting position at any time. When in checkmate, the king goes phantom and can mind control any piece checking it for one turn, temporarily making it yours. After that, the piece is captured and the king can do this two times. The mind control counts as the opponent's turn. Old Duke. Pawns can diagonally dash two tiles in any directions at all times. With six pieces left, this becomes universal and a sharknado occurs. Kill all of the enemy's pawns and keep your own. Once every four turns, you can predict which piece your opponent will move. Say whatever move you predict and they cannot make that move. If they do, you can move two pieces next turn. Devour of Gods. Once per match above half pieces, you can sacrifice a rook to teleport to and commit an unholy dash through the entire board using the movement of the rook, capturing all pieces in the path, excluding the king and queen. This includes your own. Once per match below half pieces, any piece can teleport through a portal next to an opponent's piece and capture if you have not already moved. You will swiftly return to the position you teleported from. Yaron. When you reach 8 pieces, 
Two flaring tornadoes are now on the left and right edges of the board. Any piece the opponent has within these two tornadoes is immediately captured and you can move freely through them. Only now has the match truly begun. Exo Max, The tanky, colorful contraptions of Dreon. These machines beat as one and are a threat when unified. You cannot be checkmated unless all of your pieces are captured. However, the opponent chooses what two pawns are sacrificed. Supreme Calamitous A one-time use, Supreme Calamitous, the Queen, can teleport to any four center tiles of the board and release brimstone fireballs in eight directions. Each enemy piece in the line of fire is captured, and her brothers, the Knights, will leave an explosion when they capture a piece in a one-tile aura and explode themselves. Supreme Calamitous retains normal Queen movement after her ability. Upon reaching 75, 50, and 25%, all of your pieces on Dark Tiles are invincible for one turn. At 10%, they are all invincible for a turn except your pawns, which the opponent must kill all of them if they want to proceed. <laughs> As I said in the last episode, there are four modes. Standard, Team Attack, Tournament, and Calamity. I'll finally be going over Calamity in this episode. Standard, best of three. Choose one ability of each tier. All abilities can be used and reset in every game. Tournament, best of three. Flip a coin. The winner chooses their tier one ability first. Then the opponent chooses tier one and tier two consecutively. The winner chooses their tier two and tier three, and the opponent finally chooses their tier three. No copy abilities. Tier one can only be played in game one. Tier 2, Game 2, Tier 3, Game 3. Both players must keep track of their timers, passives, and abilities. Do practice matches to get used to this. Calamity. You may need many practice matches for this, as this is a 4 player mode. Similar to analysis mode for regular chess, did I mention chess.com has 4 player chess analysis? Calamity ability suggested for max chaos. Each person choose a Tier 3 ability. Play with either checkmate or points for condition of a win. Each player is allowed to place two walls, if you play with walls. Criteria for destroying walls are your choice, explosions, jumping on them, or indestructible. Walls can be placed anywhere if agreed upon. With this amount of fun and chaos, more of the community can play together at once. Which reminds me. As of the last episode, you guys have made it clear you wanted more. And as of the last video, we've had many games in the Discord which have crucially helped me balance and will continue to do so. You all have helped me balance and come up with new ideas for abilities, especially this comment here. So if you want to take part of this fun, feel free to come hang out with us and allow me to show you what we've accomplished so far. Queen Bee Patch Notes Buff Queen Bee can now dash through an infinite amount of pieces instead of one. As long as the pieces are all together in a row and there is a space behind them for Queen Bee to land. Golem Patch Notes Nerf Instead of activating at 12 pieces, it now activates at 10. If a rook checkmates the opponent, your turn immediately ends in order to give the opponent a chance to defend. Lunatic Cultist Patch Notes Nerf Increase requirement of opponent turns for instant checkmate from 20 to 25. And then the literally the next day, Lunatic Cultist Patch Notes. Nerf. Increased requirement of opponent's turns for instant checkmate again, 25 to 30 turns. Destroy your patch notes. Nerf. Upon piercing, your piece finishes at the tile after the last pierce. I have Cthulhu patch notes. Fix. You're intended to be able to dash one space diagonally at all times, even without the 50% standard. Queen Slime Patch Notes Nerf Queen Slime can no longer kill any piece that attacks it, like a Thorns Potion. Instead, the piece that hits it will just return to where it hit it from. Duke Fish Run Nerf In his final phase, Duke Fish Run can no longer move in four tiles of any direction. Instead, this is reduced to two. Plantera Patch Notes Rework Plantera has been reworked to make her more versatile and viable for the entire game. The new Plantera ability, Plantera. 
All of your pawns act as rigid hooks of Plantera, or your queen, in order to help her maneuver. The queen can teleport to any hook before and or after a turn. Each teleportation to a pawn kills that pawn. Additionally, she has two health. HP ability. Kings can one-shot the queen. These patch notes are all in preparation of the tournament, which, depending on how many people join the tournament, it will range from 4 to 64 participants. As of right now, we have about 6. Your odds are still in favor of gaining an easy $50. I'm seriously glad everyone's having fun with my creation. But, if you want the next episode early once more, I'm matching the previous episode. 100 likes, and I'll release the next upload. Now, there's no way you'll reach that. Right? Any piece the opponent has within these two tornado, the tanky, colorful contraptions of ink. Upon piercing your piece, Queen Slam can no. I'm seriously glad everyone's having fun with my. Cre I'm seriously glad. But if you want the next episode.